Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Tuesday the 26th of July 2022. In today's Meal News, shock signing announced this evening. Murray Wallace has signed a new long-term Millwall deal. This is from millfc.co.uk. Uh, Millwall Football Club is delighted to announce that defender Murray Wallace has put pen to paper on a new long-term contract at the Den. The Lions 21-22 player of the season has made over 100 appearances for the club since signing in 2018, scoring six goals in 44 appearances in all competitions last campaign. A near-perfect hat-trick against Cambridge United in the Carabao Cup got the defender up and running for the season, with his first league goal memorably in the dying seconds uh, away to Barnsley to secure three points. The 29-year-old made his debut for the club in 2-2 draw against Middlesbrough in 2018 and has been an ever-present reliable member of the first team. And watch his interview on Mill Plus. So the first bit of uh, Mill Plus action there. So interesting stuff. That this is yet another player that we've uh, signed on a contract. Uh, what, who have we done? Billy Mitchell, Sean Hutchinson, um, Murray Wallace. So obviously, why why are we doing this? Why are we doing? Is this going to help the players? Uh, well, these in, in, players in the last year of their contract this season. So it's like, well, if we, do we want to keep them? Yeah, well, yeah, well, then let's do the deal now. Let's not wait until January because they've just got their fingers burnt with Jed Wallace. Um, so let's get the deal done earlier. Let's get it done. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's a strategy to help the players, help them play. They don't have to worry about where they're going to be working next season, if they're going to have a job here. If they're going to have to move their families across across the country, uh, across the, the world even. I mean, Ben Kofobi was potentially going to be ending up in Belgium. and uh, Lucky for him, he's, his family didn't have to go all that. He could st stay and come to me all. So it could be that, just to settle everyone down and help them play. And hopefully... We'll see on Saturday what what this means with all these players signing new contracts. So, one player who we probably won't be signing according to the rumours from the BlackpoolGazette.co.uk. Yes, I bring you all the, the news from around the world and the country. Blackpool Gazette. They are, they are saying Blackpool miss out on Ellis Sims as Huddersfield Town, Millwall and Sunderland target chooses his preferred club. So apparently Ellis Sims, the Everton striker that we were linked with on loan for the season, has decided, apparently this isn't official, this is like um, behind the scenes. Uh, it is understood that the 21-year-old has chosen to join Blackpool's championship rivals, Sunderland. So it looks like he's going to Sunderland. I don't know where they get that. Maybe we'll, they'll tell us where they got that. Um... Oh, he played for Blackpool before, so that's why they're trying to get back on loan again. Interestingly, okay. Um, so yeah, they're they're obviously talking about it from a Blackpool perspective. Well, I don't really give a shit about that. Uh, Artisfield Town and Mill had also been linked with a forward, yeah. So apparently, it's rumours there. I don't, they don't mention where the rumours come from. I think it's it's on Twitter somewhere, but uh, yeah, he's going to be joining Sunderland. So good luck to him there. Well, that's a weird one, but okay. Um, talking of loan players, but loan players of our own going to other clubs. We heard in yesterday's video that Alex Mitchell would be going out on a loan this week, apparently. Uh, so we're still waiting for that because the EFL... Uh, season starts this Saturday, so it's probably leaving it a bit late, unless he's already training at the other club that he's intending to join. But um, we will see. So this is from newsatden.co.uk. Mill boss provides loan update on youngsters. Gary Rout has said that most of the club's young players won't go out on loan for the time being. But, uh, this comes after the Mill boss confirmed that centre-back Alex Mitchell is set to join a League 1 or League 2 club on loan later this week. The likes of Isaac Loffey and Bissart Top Lodge have featured regularly for the Lions first team in pre-season but it remains to be seen as to whether or not they will feature in the squad once the championship season starts on Saturday. Neither player has made a competitive appearance for the club at the time of writing. 
However, Rout told News at Denley would prefer to keep both players at the club for the start of the upcoming campaign. At the moment, the plan is for them to stay with us for different reasons, the Mill boss explained. Tanto has been sharp all pre-season and has proved himself at a good level in the last couple of years. Would like to hang on, uh, hang around for a little bit longer and see if he can get his chance in the team. He knows that he'll probably have to uh, earn that as an impact player to start with, but that's fine, that's up to him. So as a substitute, the rules obviously changing now. It's five subs from seven, not three from uh, seven. So it could be an opportunity for Tanto, Isaac Loffey to feature Formula All next season. So that's good. Um, hopefully he takes that chance and runs with it. Uh, would really like to see him do well here. So Bez has done really well. If we found a perfect loan for him, that would be great. But what he's done at the moment is that he's offered us some good cover down the left-hand side where we're a little bit light. He's done well when he's come on. He's done uh, well in friendly games. So I certainly wouldn't hesitate to put him in a mill shirt in front of our home fans. As we stand in this moment, he'll be with us. So they're keeping him as left-sided cover because he's left-footed. And they don't really have anyone else from that. You've only really got... Um, what have you got? You've got Malone, uh, Wallace. Is Cooper left-footed? I know he plays on the left. Uh, you, you certainly wouldn't, wouldn't, want, wouldn't expect to see Jay Cooper going as a left wing back. Certainly not. So, and we did, we do know that they're still trying to bring in like one or two more players. So maybe that is a left sided player, and then maybe that is uh, another striker. So if we do bring those two other players in, then it looks like uh, maybe Tanto and Vsart Top Lodge could be going out on loan. So question marks remain over Tyler Berry's immediate future as well. The forward has been linked with a loan move in recent weeks, despite regularly contributing to the Lions' first team squad in 21-22. Uh, the plan is for Tyler to impact the first team right at it. If we feel that that's not going to happen, or if he feels there's frustration that it's not going to happen, then of course we look at other options. We always do. We always look at those options and see what we think is best for the player. It's not always about keeping them for our sake. Sometimes it's about letting them develop out on loan and getting that game time. That's the key, I think. There's one or two of our players that won't be helped by coming off the bench for the season. But if they got a chance of more regular football, then of course we'll look at that. So it looks like, again, Tyler Burry could be one for the bench mainly. Um, but here's the thing, the word that Gary keeps using, impact. Impact. Especially if you're a forward player. If you're a forward player at Millwall, you've got to do, you have to impact. You have to score, you have to set up goals. You can't just get on the pitch. Well, maybe you can get on the pitch and run around. We do like a, a bit of that. If it leads to what we saw the other day with against Ipswich, George, George Honeyman pressuring um, the defender to give the ball away to Benekafobi, who broke in the score. So maybe if you do come on and run around, but we'll, you de do need to do something when you come on the pitch at Millwall. You can't just fanny around and not, not really have a, an impact on the game. So... When, when Gary Rout says the word impact, he, that's fair enough. So obviously if Tyler Burry's coming on the pitch, we're not really doing anything, which to be fair, we mostly saw that in the Blackburn away game. Um, like it was, he didn't always have the best of games when he did play. So, but he does have moments of magic in him. He does go direct and runs at um, opposition's uh, halves and, and, uh, attacks the goal so he needs to be attacking the goal when he comes on to the pitch off the bench and uh, keep cracking on and doing what he's doing and that will be uh, fantastic for Millwall and fantastic for Tyler Burry as well um, moving on now to this from uh, Gary Rout now we saw yesterday I was kind of half joking that he was getting his, his excuses in uh, maybe he's doing it again now with this so this is from londonnewsonline.co.uk it's going to take a little time to settle. We all boss Gary Rout and Zion Fleming adjusting to championship football. Uh, Mill manager Gary Rout has underlined the patience that will be required as Zion Fleming adjusts to the rigours of English football. So, as much as I'm, I'm saying Gary Rout getting his excuses in early, this is a good... This is proper fan management. You, you need to tell the fans, look... Um, He's our record signing. We paid a lot of money for him, but um, just relax. There's, 
it's going to take a while to get going. Most recently, like Steve Morrison took a while to get going. But once he did, he was pretty decent. So let's just uh, give the guy a break and uh, let him give him time to settle in. Maybe give him like 10, 10 or 15 games and uh, let him crack on from there. Uh, the Lions broke their transfer record to sign the attacker from Fortuna Sittard this summer. Fleming played alongside Benicophobia at the weekend in Mills 1-1 draw with Ipswich Town. Rao told the South London Press, playing as a number 10 is probably his natural role and he can play as a main striker or in a front three. What I've seen, and I've seen it in training, is all the attributes of a top player in there. He's 23. He's young. What we've seen in pre-season, like any player particularly coming into the championship from a different country, it's going to take a little bit of time to settle, and that's fine. We expect that. We know that is going to happen. Okay. You don't just come into the championship and find it easy straight away. I think virtually every player who comes from abroad will remark how different the championship is. I've tried to mix it up for him a little bit to try and see where he will be most effective for us. Saturday was just another option to play him as one of the two strikers. George Honeyman as the number 10 and have a slightly different number 10 in there who will run and press, as we know. In the championship, that is going to be as important as quality on the ball. That may be a factor as well. So he's obviously saying, like, where do you want to play? Do you want to play? We'll play you here. How's how's it going? But he's changing him. He's mixing it, mixing him around. You can't really get any consistency if you continually changing the position that you're playing game by game. It's not really going to be happening, is it? So there you go. Maybe get him playing in one position and get him to do it properly. And then we can see him firing on all cylinders in the championship. So just a little, we're going to end this video on a little reminder here. The fans forum to be held at the Den of uh, on Thursday the 28th. So by the time you're uh, watching this tomorrow, probably Thursday the 28th of July, uh, Mill Football Club, Club will host its annual fans forum at the Den on Thursday the 28th of July taking place in the executive lounge between 6 and 8 p.m. Lines will scare route will be on hand to answer questions from the floor in the first hour before Chief Executive Steve Cavanaugh will take the hot seat after the break. Catherine Gale, chairperson of the Mill Sports Club, as well as other MSC representatives will be in attendance. You can pay for a drink because pay bar facilities will be available on the night with all Mill fans able to attend. We will see you there. So, they're going to let you go in, get drunk, and then ask Gary out some questions. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Um, yeah, what could go wrong? I don't know. But um, one thing I would probably want to say is, why haven't the club uploaded, uploaded to YouTube in two months? Um, have, they, have they got rid of YouTube? I mean... They haven't even uploaded an advert to YouTube to say, "Yeah, we're not we're not uploading on YouTube." Come, you need to go to, go to our website, uh, go to Mule TV on this website or this link. Uh, you can get the highlights there for free, or you can pay extra to get audio commentary and blah blah blah. You know, like an like an advert. They haven't even uploaded anything like that, so. Um. I would ask them that. I would also ask, like, what are you going to do to boost our away form? Um, now, we know at home the fans are, are a big factor in, in the wins that we get. Can we do that more away from home? Can we get more away fans to go um, to away games? How can we do that? Um, can we run coaches from different places so people don't have to get up at stupid o'clock? make their way all the way to the den to get a, a coach or here's an idea maybe when the coach comes back from the game maybe they can drop people off uh where they live because i believe the coaches come from a company in dartford so why can't they make several stops at the, rather than dumping everyone off at the den let's make several stops off along the way at various stops as the coach goes to where it's supposed to be parking up yeah, at Dartford somewhere so I don't whatever they can do to boost away uh, attendances to boost um, away performances 
by a mill football club and I would ask Gary out as well. Like, what? How are you going to set up away from home that we can we can actually win some away games? I mean, are you going to have the fast players playing on the break? Are we going to have two separate teams? Like, this is our home team, this is our away team. Um, because we do certainly have various different options now of different players and different players' styles. Um, so can we do that? We certainly need to improve our away form, and I think that's the key in us uh, going up the table because our away form was absolute dog shit. Our home form was incredible. It was the third best in the league or second best in the league, whatever. Um, that needs to be improved. The away form. That's that's the key. That's the obstacle. That's what we need to to um, improve. So those will, those would be my two questions if I was going, but I'm not. Um, so yeah, just a reminder about that. And on that note, thank you for watching, and goodbye.